There's a big misconception spreading through modern gardening circles that biochar is the only way to fix depleted soil. While biochar has its place, especially for long-term carbon storage, there's another ancient material that often gets overlooked, and it's been quietly reviving gardens for centuries. Wood ash. Before biochar became the buzzword, generations of farmers knew how to use ash not just as a waste product, but as a balanced mineral tonic that restored fertility, boosted microbial life, and even balanced soil pH. And when handled the right way, this ash hack can revive tired beds faster and cheaper than any bagged amendment on the shelf. The truth about why wood ash outperforms biochar in certain soils. Biochar acts as a long-term sponge, it's great for holding nutrients, but by itself, it contributes little in terms of immediate nutrition. It's inert until charged with compost, manure, or microbial inoculants, meaning it's more of a soil architecture tool than a fertilizer. Wood ash, however, is the direct opposite. It's active, fast-acting, and instantly available. When hardwood burns down to ash, the result is a rich powder loaded with calcium, potassium, phosphorus, and trace minerals like zinc and magnesium, all in soluble form. These are the same minerals plants extract from the earth, cycle through their tissues, and then return when they die or burn. Ash, in other words, is nature's instant recycling system. You know, it's what biochar wants to be after a few seasons of microbe charging, but wood ash starts there from day one. And if your soil tends toward acidity or compaction, ash can transform its texture and chemistry almost overnight. All right. So let's talk about how to actually use wood ash in your garden. It's important to spread it evenly over the soil and then gently work it in rather than leaving it on the surface where it could blow away or clump up. Always make sure the ash is completely cool and dry before handling and avoid using ash from treated wood since that can introduce harmful chemicals into your soil. Oh, and remember to wear gloves and a mask if the ash is powdery just to keep things safe for yourself. Timing matters too. Apply wood ash in the fall or early spring, giving those nutrients a chance to settle in before planting. And, uh, don't mix ash directly with nitrogen fertilizers, since that can cause ammonia loss. Just, you know, keep it simple and spread it out as part of your regular soil care routine. The key lies in understanding how much to use and when. Too much wood ash, however, can destroy what you're trying to build. Its high calcium carbonate content raises pH rapidly, which can lock out nutrients if added blindly. For most garden beds, the safe range is about one cup per square meter. Or for raised beds, roughly one quart of ash mixed into every 25 to 30 gallons of topsoil. That's enough to neutralize acidity without disrupting microbial balance. The best time to apply it is in fall or early winter. During these cooler, wetter months, the ash has time to mellow and integrate into the soil profile before spring planting. The rainfall helps wash soluble salts deeper, and by spring, what remains is a mineral-enriched, pH-balanced foundation that encourages earthworms and root expansion. If applied during active growth, especially in hot or dry weather, it can burn plant roots or shock soil biology, so timing and moderation matter. Wood ash helps rebuild structure and feed soil life at the same time. Unlike biochar, which primarily improves aeration and drainage, ash contributes both to structure and feeding. The calcium component acts as a soil flocculant, binding fine particles of clay into crumbly aggregates that hold air and water better. Meanwhile, the potassium salts feed microbial colonies responsible for decomposition and humus formation. When these microbes thrive, organic matter breaks down faster, and nutrients become more available to plants. A simple and powerful technique is to combine wood ash with compost or leaf mold before applying it. Mix one part ash with five parts compost, let it sit for a few weeks, then spread it over your soil. This not only buffers the ash's alkalinity, but also supercharges the compost with minerals that prevent nutrient leaching during rains. So, the end product acts like a natural mineral humate, feeding plants, 
stabilizing nitrogen, and encouraging deep microbial networks. It's honestly a fantastic way to boost your garden's health. Now let's talk a bit about the different types of ash you might encounter and, you know, the best ways to actually apply them in your garden. Not all ashes are created equal, and how you use them really does matter for your plant's well-being. Certain types of ash are better than others for soil revival. Hardwood ash, especially from oak, maple, or fruit trees, is the most nutrient-dense and balanced for garden use. Softwood ash from pine or fir contains more resin residues and is lighter in minerals, making it less ideal for long-term soil building. Never use ash from treated wood, painted lumber, or charcoal briquettes, as these introduce toxic compounds that can sterilize soil. So, a good test is to check the texture and color. Fine, grayish-white ash usually means you've got complete combustion and high mineral purity, but if it's dark and sooty, well, that means it still contains unburned carbon, which can temporarily tie up nitrogen. In that case, just mix it into compost rather than applying it directly to your beds. For gardeners looking to restore lifeless beds, the ash hack really works best when you integrate it with organic matter, not just use it alone. Start by loosening the top 6 inches of soil, then sprinkle the measured amount of wood ash evenly, and layer it with compost or shredded leaves at about a 1 to 5 ratio. Water it lightly to settle the particles and, you know, activate that mineral exchange. In compacted or acidic beds, which is often the case after years of heavy feeding or rain leaching, this blend can actually change your soil texture in just one season. You'll notice the surface darken as microbial activity picks up, and within a few weeks, earthworms start moving in. The calcium in the ash helps them thrive by neutralizing acidic pockets, while potassium and trace elements fuel plant metabolism once spring rolls around. For container gardens, you'll want to scale down the mix a bit. Just blend one tablespoon of wood ash per gallon of potting soil, ideally with some compost or worm castings mixed in. This way, you create a mineral base that feeds your potted vegetables and herbs through several growth cycles and you won't need to rely on synthetic fertilizer. So, that's really all there is to it. Using wood ash can be a simple, natural way to boost your garden's health, whether you're growing in the ground or in containers. Give it a try and see how your plants respond. And hey, if you found this guide helpful, go ahead and share it with your fellow gardeners. Happy gardening! Modern gardening tends to overlook simple mineral cycles. We spend fortunes on bottled amendments while discarding wood ash as waste. Yet ash embodies the principles of regenerative gardening, reuse, balance, and mineral restoration. It's really the missing link in many overworked gardens that rely solely on compost or biochar. What makes ash remarkable is how it closes the loop. When you burn fallen branches, pruning waste, or orchard trimmings, you're not just disposing, you're converting them into a concentrated soil supplement that restores exactly what the tree once took from the ground. No other amendment matches that cycle of return so cleanly. Biochar may dominate the conversation, but wood ash remains the faster, more accessible soil rescuer for gardeners who understand moderation and balance. It revives exhausted beds, corrects pH, feeds worms, and restores trace minerals lost through constant cropping. So, before you rush to buy another expensive soil booster, look to what's left after your last wood fire. It's honestly one of nature's oldest and most efficient fertilizers. If you found this guide useful and want more hands-on methods for rebuilding soil health naturally, subscribe to Hydro Haven. And hey, Share this with a fellow gardener who burns firewood or prunes trees, because what most people throw away can be the exact thing that brings their garden back to life.